Okay, 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 okay. I know I said I wasn't gonna cover another actor in this series, but this is slightly different. Today, I'm gonna look at the voice of Clint Eastwood. You're an actor uh, performing a certain role. Hi, my name's Darren McStay. This is Vocabilities.com, AKA Improve Your Voice. And as I said, today I'm gonna be looking at and giving a quick brief review on the voice of the m f mega famous, like legendary actor and director, Clint Eastwood. Now, interestingly about Clint Eastwood, in the early part of his career, when he got his first movie roles, he was given lots of lines to say. Now, this was a smart move for him because he doesn't necessarily have what you call like a, an amazing voice. He's got a very distinctive voice, but we'll talk about that in a second. The point I'm trying to make is that he gave all these lines away. He said to the directors, I want other people to say that. They can say that, I don't need to say that. And by doing this, what happened was he created um, a kind of culture on set of everyone else talking while he just said nothing and it had a reaction shots. And this made him a star. The reactions he gave were so powerful and he was able to visualize what he was seeing that everyone else did the work around him and he didn't have to speak. It gave him authority. So not speaking can also give you authority. That's why I wanted to mention that. So back into it. I found an interview with him from, I think somewhere in the 90s. So this is not, he's not too young, not too old like he is now. This is somewhere kind of closer to the middle of his career. And so I thought that was a good place to go because his voice is not too grainy because of its age and not too fresh because of its youth. And what the first thing that stands out to me is, is his mouth and what he does with his mouth. And this is what he does with his mouth. He does, he tightens his top lip and he does not move it. The top lip does not move at all. The only thing moving is his bottom lip slightly, but he doesn't open his mouth. He just clenches his teeth. His teeth are completely closed all the time, like this. And he's uh, ever so slight, he just speaks like that. Also, his mouth is quite small and a bit forward, but air spills out the side. So he's, uh, he just, uh, Let's it come out there, you know? But let's have a little look at him speaking now. You're an actor uh, performing a certain role, and, and that doesn't mean that you have anything in common with that person. Sometimes you do, and let you have a lot of elements that you put, bring of yourself to every character, but you can play characters, and sometimes that's the most fun, that you have no uh, s sympathy with whatsoever in life. So it's not actually necessary that he's not moving the top lip, but it's so thin that that actually affects the way he speaks. And actually not opening his teeth very much really creates that sound. And he's trying to draw air through. He's actually trying to push a lot of air through, but it does sound quite tight. It's always with him sounding quite tense. And uh, like he's, uh, it's not necessarily restriction or damage, but he's deliberately, it sounds like, um, making that happen. So how's he doing that? Actually, I think he might be able, he might be doing that with his tongue. If you bring the back of your tongue up in your mouth a bit higher, and then you've got a sound that comes out like that. So his tongue might be quite high at the back, and uh, maybe that's making that thing happen. If his tongue was lower at the back, it would be rounder and richer, like that. But very hard to do if your mouth is shut. So, so because his jaw is tight and his, his teeth are closed together, he's kind of open, co he's compensating with the back of his tongue lifting up so he, the front can be looser to articulate. So he, because he can be heard, he's understood, he's clear. And so that, breath, that breathy sound is what's called a fricative and it's basically where restriction is put in somewhere in the voice box and cuts short the flow of air. We have different ways we can do this, but if you think about making a sound such as an F, because we're closing off the, the shape of our mouth, an air is kind of seeping out there. So a vowel sound is usually voiced and open, uh, and fricatives are usually closed. But you can hear that an F becomes a V, just by adding the voice. Now he's using a fricative, but he's using it with his tongue, which is quite, quite rare. And he's sending the air up through, through his mouth, but it's not coming completely out of his teeth, so it's coming out of his nose, and that's part of his accent as well. And what I found most interesting that I thought would be useful to you guys is that he doesn't necessarily have a big, rich, resonant voice, like I often say with actors, but he's still got presence 
everyone is still engaged with what he's saying and he's heard, he's clear, he's, under, he's, e he's easily understood. So, so it's not always about having a big voice, a deep voice, and even about having a round, rich, clear voice. Sometimes you can get away with it and be understood even if your jaw is tight, even if your tongue is in a funny position, and even if you're sending air through and restricting it a bit. Now, how is he doing this? Because he is confident in his own skin because he trusts the words he says, and he takes his time to say them. Even though there's all these restrictions that seem to be in the way of him speaking a bit more clearly, it's still audible. And he work, of course he works much better on camera, and because he's always worked with a microphone, he's never had to raise his voice. If he worked in the theater, it, actually, I don't think Clint Eastwood would be a, a very good theater actor at all, because he'd have to retrain his whole voice uh, in a very different way. But in this interview, as you can see, People listen to him. He captures people's attentions. He has authority and presence because he is present and comfortable in his own skin. So there's some food for thought in there about engaging with others. And maybe you don't necessarily have to worry too much about these restrictions or issues you have. And it can be about the message you're delivering too. So that was my brief review of Clean Eastwood. I hope it's been useful for you. My name's Darren McStay. This is vocabilities.com, AKA improve your voice. And until the next time, look after your voice.